everybody is safe and home and with their family and stuff so let's start actually with our webinar because you know let's be, bring some light to our day uh, today we are having thomas and we'll discuss how to build a real estate photography business Actually, this kind of concept, this kind of topic of webinar, uh, most of you have been asking us, you know, to present, to bring a person, an expert to talk to us. And so Thomas is one of the best in the industry. He's being an author of the full-time real estate photography uh, book. It's available on Amazon. Um, he's also having his own pod podcast on his site. And of course, he's a real estate photographer, real estate agent, and a serial entrepreneur, which actually is amazing that we are having a person here that can direct us in every side because you know it's different to be a real estate photographer, different to be a real estate agent. Real estate agent will give us the sides of the things, and real estate photographer will give you guys the insights of the industry. So actually, uh, we don't need to waste more time. And please, Thomas, can you please introduce yourself to our attendees today? Sure. So yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Tom Bargelettis. I uh, I own a real estate photography business uh, at my hometown here in Lemonster, Massachusetts. Uh, we actually cover my entire state with my team. It's a small team. Um, that, that covers a, a very large area out here. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been, I've been doing this for several years now, but uh, I've been involved in businesses, uh, many businesses in years leading up to it. So um, I've had a lot of business experience. And when we get into talking about um, my, uh, and the, you know, how I share information in the podcast and in the, full-time real estate photographer book is that I also share, put a lot of time and attention on the business side of the business too, to help people get started, not just on how to take the photos, but how on how to run a successful and profitable business. Uh, amazing, Thomas. Uh, actually, um, Amanpreet is telling us in, on the chat that you cannot hear us. Can you please, everybody confirm if you can hear us or not? If another person can confirm, that would be super helpful. Okay, great. If one person can hear yes. us, then means everybody uh, should have a better. Loud and clear. Yeah. So, Manfred, maybe try to turn on your speaker or something and stuff so you can hear us. So, great, Thomas. Actually, we have been discussing that you're doing the real estate photography for a while. So, what do you think would be an a good advice for a beginner starting in the real estate photography business? Uh, yeah, so beginners in real estate photography, I, I guess um, the first thing you, that you need to consider is what's your purpose for getting into photography? Mm -hmm. Is it just going to be something for fun um, mm -hmm. that you want to do on the side? You don't care if you make any money at it or, or not, or is this something that you want to take seriously and either make a um, supplement income to some other job that you might do or replace your income? So if you if you know you want to take this really seriously and you want to make maybe a full-time business out of real estate photography um then you're going to have to make certain decisions about how you're going to be spending your time if this is just an interest of adding maybe some money on the side um then you know your, your priorities will be a little bit different but uh if you want to once you make those basic business decisions getting started um, the first step in growing your real estate photography business is in building a portfolio um, it's something i talk about I, I think i have a whole podcast episode on getting clients and building up your portfolio but um, you know you, you want to be able to show your clients the kind of work that you're able to produce it's going to be super important because uh, you know, as a photographer, uh, you have to be able to sh let your work speak for itself almost. Um, and if you're just starting out and you don't have a portfolio yet, uh, it's actually really easy to get started. So, um, this is also a great time to focus on learning your photography technique, um, and your editing technique as well. Uh, you can start by 
practicing in your own home. I mean, if you are interested in becoming a real estate photographer, you probably you probably live in a house or an apartment somewhere. Uh, you can practice in your own bedroom or a kitchen that you have access to. Uh, you can call friends or family members, friends of friends, ask people ask people if you can practice and take some real estate photos. Um, once you start building up your skill level, maybe you'll reach out to a real estate agent and say, uh, I'm a photographer, I'm building my portfolio. Here's a couple images I've been working on. I'd like to shoot your next listing for free if I can use the images going forward for my portfolio. Uh, so mm -hmm. you'll be able to build that up uh, pretty quickly by just reaching out to those people and, and practicing. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that's uh, that, that's step one. Um, okay. I, I can keep keep going on and on about building up portfolios, but um. yeah, fair enough. Actually, you know, uh, because I heard like some people they are saying maybe the free service is not very advisable and stuff because you are yeah. offering you know for free your services, even you're you know wasting your time or maybe you have your full time job and you want to start this on the side. So mm -hmm. let's say. Um, for a rule of thumb, how many cases you will do for free before you will jump? And how, when you will jump into the pricing thing, uh, how you can cost your services to an existing client that you have done for free? So, so, oh, yeah. well, so, so you're asking like, uh, uh, how many, cause I suggested like do some, offer to do some work for free. And, yeah. and, and the question is like, uh, so, okay, so, you know, at this point in my business now, I would not do anything for free. I would not discount any of my services except for some certain ex exceptions. Um, but when you're just starting out, mm -hmm. you have to you have to be able to create these opportunities for yourselves to work. And sometimes it means you have to do a couple things for free. And if you're just starting out, I feel like you kind of have to offer some photo shoots for free. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have an established portfolio and, and you have a book of business, you know, you have money coming in, then, you know, you don't have to do anything for free at all. But I, I think, yeah, if you're just starting out and you're trying to get work uh, and you're trying to build your portfolio, that's a, that's a great way to do it. it. It would be really difficult, I think, to charge a real estate agent money for photos that they're practice images anyways that you're supposed to be using to learn on. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So um, speaking on, you know, like offering free services and stuff, how you price your visual tours? For example, are you following, uh, I guess, for, at, at the moment you have already figured out the pricing of your visual tours. So how you are pricing in, in the early days uh, your visual tour? Are you based on some kind of metrics or based on the location or based on the property, let's say? Uh, so the question is, how do I price uh, my services? Uh, pricing can be tricky at first, especially if you're coming into this business, um, you, you know, without much experience. Um, there's a lot of competition in the marketplace. When I want to price out any of my work, that's the first thing that I look to. I will look at other real estate photographers' websites. If they don't have pricing on their website, I'll call them or send in an email or whatever, uh, pretending to be a client and asking to get a quote for some work. And I'll just see what people are charging for what kind of quality of work that uh, uh, out here in my area. Uh, so. You know, I'm looking at their prices. I'm looking at if I can find their work to see what's their, their image quality. And that gives me a really good idea of what I could probably get in my marketplace. Um, you know, if what I was thinking from, you know, the beginning, you know, that my prices were going to be much higher than what I'm seeing or, or much lower, then, you know, I'll, I'll make those kinds of uh, decisions of, whether I had a realistic idea of what I could charge for something or not. Um, but that's the best way to get a good idea of, of what you could potentially make um, in your areas. Uh, so that I, it's a comparison pricing model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I talk about. So another one is um, 
you, from the, from a different perspective, you can just ask yourself, how much money do you need to make in order to justify um, having a full-time real estate photography business or to justify the extra time on the side from your main job? You just have to ask yourself, how much money do I need to make and how many hours do I have to make that money in? And I need to make you know x dollars an hour if you can figure out how long it will take you to do a real estate photo shoot then you can just say it will take me so much time to do the photo shoot and for this yeah. much time i have to make x dollars um that way I, I i prefer the comparison model but uh you know some people have like a specific number they say i have to make x dollars or it's not worth it i can't do it at all and uh, for those people, you could actually figure out how much you should charge per job mm -hmm. doing it like that. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, to wrap up, it's more like you are doing uh, market research, calling local photographers mm -hmm. to figure out the pricing. And second, mm -hmm. actually, your base hourly rate, something that you can leave up to this kind of business and stuff. So fair enough. Um, actually, uh, speaking of those things, uh, I would like to ask, how are you generating clients? For example, how you are generating your leads? Uh, I mean, I guess mostly now would be word of mouth, but mm -hmm. in the early days, besides the free um, promotional offers and stuff, uh, how, what else are you doing to get clients mm -hmm. in an area that people don't know you, uh, you know, they don't really so, know you. Yeah. yeah, so getting clients is, um, that's that's one of my favorite things to do in this business. It's, it's actually what I try and spend most of my time on. Uh, now that I have a team going out and doing the, the photo shoots for me, I, most of my time is uh, focusing on getting new clients. Um, there's a whole episode dedicated to this in the podcast as well. Um, and I'm still using the same technique today as when I get started. So when I decided that I was going to you know, uh, stop focusing on real estate sales for my income and just focus on real estate photography. I started to do this technique and within a couple of months, I was replacing my other sources of income. And then my next 12 months after that, we broke through six figures in income for our real estate photography business. So it works really, really well. And mm -hmm. all we did was simply office presentations. I would book a presentation at a real estate agent's office. Um, you know, there'd be 10, 20, 30 people there, however many agents. Uh, they'll come together for a meeting and I'll just stand in front of them and then I would give them my real estate photography presentation. I would show them my portfolio, I would show them my prices, uh, talk to them about booking appointments with me and I would end each presentation with a question. I would ask them, if anyone here had a listing that they wanted to book a photo shoot for. And usually I would get one or two people right on the spot, raise their hand and book an appointment with me. Um, when I started the business, I would do multiple presentations a day, every single day. And then as I started getting more and more clients, getting busier, um, you know, fewer and fewer now. And now, you know, maybe I'll do one a week, two a week, but I'm still doing the same thing that we did you know, since we started, so, you know, three years ago. Yeah, I see. So actually, Lev um, has a question. How much investment, um, mm. you know, you can set up as a capital and you can start your business? Mm. And actually, what kind of equipment uh, should you, sh should someone get in the early stages of real estate photography? Yes, the, so th this is a, that's a really important question. Um, how much money should you spend when it comes to camera gear and computer mm -hmm. computing gear and all the accessories that go along with it you could spend as much money as you can imagine i mean you could buy a camera that's worth tens of thousands of dollars yeah. um but when you look at it with my approach i i don't like to spend more money than I absolutely need to. Mm -hmm. I look at the need that I have in the, this business. And when it comes to real estate photography, you don't need to have the best equipment to have good uh, quality work. 
you don't have to have the the biggest and the newest camera to get good real estate photos. So even in our own business, we buy used equipment. Um, I, I buy as mu many as much used equipment as I possibly can, um, because when you look at the cost of these this equipment brand when it's brand new versus you know a year old used but in still really good condition. Uh, the value drops off significantly. So if your equipment is going to depreciate like 80% of its value in the first year or two, why not save that money now and get the used equipment? Um, so like, you know, when you're, when you're making decisions, like, should I buy this? Should I buy that? A lot of people are looking at like they they have their B and H shopping cart or they're on Amazon, you know, trying to look, you know, filling up this online shopping cart of brand new stuff, I would say don't even look for the newest, best thing you want to use equipment that will get you good quality results, obviously, if you want to charge money for your work. Um, but it, you don't have to spend a fortune on it. Uh, and so on that note, I'll just tell you guys what we use. So the first camera that I ever bought for uh, real estate photography, and I actually still have it. It's, it's at my office, although we don't take it out anymore. It's been beat up quite a bit. Is the Panasonic GH4, and I with that GH4, I've shot everything from, you know, cheap you know, thirty thousand dollar mobile homes to, uh, well, there was a nine million dollar ten thousand square foot house uh, by the ocean and everything in between and uh real estate photography and video and if you if you're familiar with the the, the camera the, the the panasonic gh4 it it's not it wasn't even the best camera the year that it was made uh, mm -hmm. i think they came out new 2014. Um, but when you know your photography technique and your editing technique and you have a really consistent system you can get the kind of quality out of the gear that uh, some people wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, definitely, if you're in the early days, in the early stages, you don't need to invest uh, big. Uh, you need to test out the waters first and after you will invest. Um, so based on that, um, I'm, I, I will just reply to some people in the chat. Uh, Diana, um, She's asking, are we going to talk about uh, realist, uh, photography techniques and stuff? Uh, I'm not sure if we have time you know, to squeeze everything in one webinar. Um, but maybe on that, maybe you can talk about a little bit about that, Thomas? About the, uh, the photography technique, about how yeah. you actually I mean, take photos? Kind of sure. So. And stuff, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, what we use, I mean, it's typically the same thing for every single photo shoot with exceptions of like twilight shoots. Um, mm -hmm. For ex exteriors, we're just doing single exposures for the exterior. Um, uh, we, have a, we have like a, a long pole that we put the camera on to get, you know, a more interesting perspective on our exterior images. Uh, interiors are, uh, usually several exposures. So we have the camera on a tripod for every single shot. Uh, we set up our composition, we level the camera, and then we take an ambient photo and a flash. Um, mm -hmm. There are some exceptions to that as well. There are some situations where we may need to take more, but generally for the ambient image, we're exposing for the interior light. Uh, so, you know, we, we expose it so the, um, inside of the room or that we're shooting looks nice and bright, but maybe the windows will be completely blown out pure white. And then mm -hmm. when we take our flash photo, we expose for the exterior light in the camera, but we fill the room with flash. So when you take the flash frame, you have a brightly lit room and you can see clearly through the windows. And we do those two uh, for, uh, editing later, and, and we can talk about editing as well, uh, but we take them later into Lightroom and then Photoshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so actually, these kind of techniques are more like for the DSLR kind of 
photographer and stuff but you know um as we discussed before like ice aging is also focusing on the smartphone capturing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so here uh, mr mercury is asking like um he's capturing the smartphone right on the mm -hmm. using our smartphone capturing app so mm -hmm. he's having um some kind of issues with the nadir and the zenith if I'm not mistaken, the black holes at the bottom and the top of the live tour. Um, I guess mm -hmm. this is this is happening because the smartphone actually we have a 720 degree lens that you are touching on the phone. However, that thing at the a little bit at the you know at the upper level of the smartphone cannot be captured the full thing. Um, this is Abby is happening because um, even if you didn't attach your lens. Uh, quite well on the smartphone um, then it's creating the black hole uh, or I guess because it's smartphone and you need a better like a camera I don't know if you are coming across to these kind of problems Thomas using other kind of cameras uh, using other kinds of cameras I mean the only cameras that we really try to use in this business are the uh, DSLM cameras the mirrorless uh, digital cameras yeah so i guess it's kind of different from the dslr and the smartphone capturing because with the dslr you are capturing you know parts and after you are stitching them together right yeah for as far as taking panels exactly mm -hmm. exactly so, yeah um, the image quality is, is so much better yeah indeed indeed i mean we have seen uh, at ice aging like examples from dslr and it's super good but um, our solution is, you know, uh, using your smartphone, you don't need to invest actually in a super expensive cameras and stuff. So I guess if you just take care a little bit of the lens on the smartphone, then you will avoid this kind of black holes at the bottom and at the top of the light tool. So um, what I will say, like, if you guys, you have any questions, you can just ask us. Thomas will be answering them through the way. Um, so I will, I will say, um, for example, in real estate, there are some peak and some off, you know, uh, not really off, off peak seasons and stuff. Well, how you are feeling your time in those uh, not really peak seasons for real estate? So, so you're asking about time management? Yeah, yeah. Or like off season kind of situations. What are you trying? What are you doing? <clears throat> When real estate agents, they don't really want to capture on when the real estate market is not that good. Okay, so so how do you how do you cope with those like slowdowns in the business, yeah. right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> so for me, I mean, I give this similar kind of advice to to people who are just starting out as well. Um, if your business is slowing down, then you you need to still have some structure in your schedule. Like let's say when you're busy, you're working 40 hours a week. Well, when your business is slowing down, you still need to plan that you're going to work for 40 hours a week, except mm -hmm. instead of doing photo shoots, your time is going to now be dedicated more towards uh, prospecting for new clients, getting new clients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I teach uh, how to do uh, office presentations and get office presentations with people, but you also want to put some time into uh, following up with past clients, especially people that you haven't heard from in a while, and ask them how their business is doing and if there's anything that you can do to help them out. Uh, sometimes by being proactive like that, you can call a client and maybe say, um, you know, if you didn't do a couple of services that you usually ordered, we could bring your invoice a little bit lower and you save some money here. And you can might even get a few extra deals uh, uh, just calling and talking to your clients too. Um, so yeah, as your time as your time kind of shifts away from doing paid work, it, your the rest of your time should be focusing on getting more clients and getting more paid work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite quite fair. Um, so, speaking of like this kind of off season and kind of fluctuated uh, seasons of real estate, um, do you think like what do you think about virtual tours? Like, are you know, do you think that they're important for a real estate agent because you are a real estate agent as well? Uh, 
what is the important the importance of visual tours in the real estate industry? Yeah, virtual tours I think are extremely important. Uh, I mean, if I'm being honest, I think the virtual tours are the future of how most people are going to want to see real estate. It's just the most convenient thing. Um, and I even make virtual tours a big part of my presentations when I go and mm -hmm. present uh, my business and my work to potential clients. I bring up this ability that we have to create virtual tours for their listings. And I tell them how this is the opportunity for them to show their listings in the way that a buyer can see the property on their own terms. And mm -hmm. I, I have this whole, I, I script all my presentations. I say the same thing every single time. I say um, that, uh, you know, this isn't the listing as shown by your videographer or your photographer. This is the listing as shown by your buyer. They can go through this house and they can look at things and focus on the things that are the most important to them. Uh, and, I, and then I tell them that it makes the listing available for showings 24 seven. I, I tell them these things that, I know that they can say to their clients too, um, because when you can get real estate agents excited about about uh, details like that, then they then they buy it. But uh, that part of my presentation is uh, is actually one of one of the big reasons why um, people raise their hand at the end and say, "Yeah, I want to, I want that," you know, yeah. and then become a new client. Yeah. So what I will say, like also based on our own experience, is more like a real estate agent in order to buy is actually they want to see in you your salesperson. So if you pitch them quite enough, they will buy because they are salespeople. They want to hear your pitch. They want to get convinced with arguments. So actually, you need to really know the market and give arguments why virtual tools are good. Um, like speaking of visual tours, actually, I would like to uh, ask you as well, what do you think about floor plans and extra services that you can give to real estate agents? <clears throat> yeah, yeah I, I think that there's a lot of money to be made with, with mm -hmm. doing extra add-on services like that. So we do floor plans. We do floor plans for probably 80% of the photo shoots that we do, like thousands every single year. Um, it's a great source of income right there. Um, you know, we also offer prints, uh, real estate prints and creative edits, uh, you know, for a small fee, they, you know, uh, uh, we can edit a photo to make it look like a, like an oil painting. Uh, okay. so, you know, adding on additional services for the agent so they have fewer people to call when they need to have floor plans done, for example, is uh, is huge. So yeah, floor plans are really, really good to add. Amazing. So I would also like, um, speaking of the floor plans, I would like also to add that iStaging just launched uh, our floor plan service. So if you cannot offer this kind of service uh, on, in your add-on services, then now iStaging can offer it, and I think it's around 15 USD. Uh, it's super cheap that you can, you know, price it a little bit higher to your clients and get an extra money, you know, because every virtual tour and every property needs a floor plan. So, and if I'm not mistaken, in Canada, uh, if we have any Canadians here, is illegal actually not to attach a floor plan in your, in your, you know, in your listings and stuff. So this is a new service from iStaging. So if you like. To go ahead guys and try it out it's just 15 usd you can find it in your portal um so so i can see some questions here from some people thomas i don't know if you have some time to help me answer those questions yeah sure so here peter is asking which wide angle lens would you recommend for your DSLR which camera. which wide angle lens? Well, yeah. there's so many. <clears throat> so if you're using the camera that we're using and you want to use the lens that we're using, we're we're on the Panasonic GH4 or GH5, and uh, uh, I have the Lawa um, 7.5 millimeter lens. It's a prime lens, manual lens, uh, and we also use the Leica 8 to 18. The, the weatherproof version of it. I think there's, well, maybe that's the only version of it. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So those are extremely wide angle lens, but they're not fish eyed lenses and they're not uh, this very minimal barrel distortion. It, it's okay if you have some barrel distor distortion when you go that wide, it's easy to deal with in post, but ideally you wanna have a lens that can go really, really wide that does not warp your image at the edges because you don't want to have any weird issues with uh, ghosting or or when you de-warp it, making something kind of look not the way that it was supposed to look. Um, so on the Micro Four Third system, the uh, a seven and a half millimeter lens um, would be similar to uh, on a full frame, it would be uh, 15 millimeters, I think, if I uh, am doing the math right. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're on an APS-C lens, it would be somewhere in between. So uh, the, the lenses are really, really wide. It's helpful to have uh, multiple focal lengths. So a, zoom, a lens that can zoom in a little bit uh, might be really helpful for those, those special kind of shots where you want to be cropped in. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, that, that would be my only guidance on the lens. Some, something wide that doesn't have a ton of distortion. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Um, so Charles, I mean, Charles is asking a question. What kind of cameras um, are you suggesting to buy, and where you can buy it? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I've already mentioned uh, Panasonic, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We're we're using the GH4s. Um, but if if you if you prefer a different brand or you have a camera now that's that's different than that, then that's fine. Um, if you have an interchangeable lens camera that uh, you can control a flash with, like you have a little hot shoe mount or you have some sort of a flash sync port somewhere, um, that's really all you would need in your camera to get started. Most modern cameras, uh, the, the image quality is, is just fine for standard real estate images. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So Les uh, is also asking, like, is it... Uh, good to you know get paid at the end of the project or you cannot or are you asking for deposit or some kind of installments and stuff yes actually this is uh something that i recently added to my business and uh, i had a podcast episode about it that i was thinking about doing this thing and then i implemented it uh we are taking booking fees up front so if for anyone to book an appointment with me a book a photo shoot uh, they have to put a hundred dollars down and then at the completion of the photo shoot they have to pay whatever the remaining balance is uh, mm -hmm. so we we started doing that last year or or year and a half ago or so um and and it's been it's been great it's drastically prevent reduced the number of uh, last minute cancellations because now that people pay a little bit of money up front mm -hmm. uh you know they know that they might not get this back, so they, 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 they plan ahead a little bit better. Um, and it helps me feel, a, you know, a little bit safer when, you know, I see a solid schedule up ahead. I actually have some money, you know, in, in, in my bank that, 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 that I have to show for it. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So, yeah, good to hear and stuff. So if you guys want to do the same way as Thomas is doing, maybe you can just create, you know, just buy a checkout software online. There are some super cheap ones and you can just, you know, install it on your website and just <clears throat> take your bookings there. So um, let me go first to Charles. Uh, Charles is asking, like, where would be the best place to buy a used camera? So. <clears throat> You know, if you don't have, um, you know, I guess big kind of websites and stuff, or if you have any other idea where you can buy a used camera, Thomas? Uh, yes, I do. So for me, I like to look at the at the uh, Facebook Marketplace. Um, in in here in the United States, we have um, these uh, online like yard sale kind of mm -hmm. websites where people just put stuff up for sale. Um, I just check on those because mm -hmm. you know in the, in the photography world you have this really interesting phenomenon where you have people who maybe they just had uh, a baby and they bought this really expensive camera and tripod and flash and they're like i'm gonna take pictures of 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 my baby every single day 
and they were really excited about it. And maybe they used it for like two months and then, you know, they realized that they were just going to use their phone anyways. So they yeah. put it up for sale for like, you know, the shutter count is on a camera less than on a $5,000 camera with a shutter count of less than a thousand. They'll put it up for sale for like $2,000, you know, um, yeah. and you can get even better deals than that. In fact, I've, I've even gone out and I've bought uh, extra gear like backup cameras backup tripods um just because the people were selling it so so cheap um uh yeah it's, it's, you can get some great deals but it, it does take time to do that so that's the the one drawback is that if you're in a rush that's not a great way to shop uh because then you can't wait to find someone who's trying to sell something for a really really good price Mm -hmm. that's right that's right so actually i will go back to the pricing kind of thing because i see here people they have a lot of questions so um mr mirfuri is asking um are you actually adding in the price of the visual of, of your virtual tour or your services the hosting fee of your virtual tours or you are you know pushing that to your yes client? yeah i do <clears throat> yeah i do so uh you know, th this is just a basic business principle is, is that everything that you do, you need to be profiting from. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, if you're not, if you're not profiting from the services that you're offering in your business, then you won't have a business for very long. So, uh, when you, when you look at whatever your cost is for anything, including virtual tours, you bake that into your, into your invoice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, just out of curiosity, for how long are you charging them for hosting fees? Uh, hosting fees, uh, I include the first 12 months for free, or, or not for free, you know, it's included with the invoice. And then afterwards, um, I give them a couple options. I say I can transfer all the files to you, and then you can manage it on your own for a one-time small fee. Um, but that would be difficult and, and you know, it would take them a lot of time to figure that out. Usually they don't like to do that. So I say, um, I can maintain, I can keep hosting it here, but it will be a monthly fee. So I tell them it's $17 a month, but you have to prepay annually 12 months in advance. And then mm -hmm. every 12 months I have them pay if they want to keep it for, for longer. But for most cases, you know, the, the, there's no need for them to keep it virtual tours any longer than than the first 12 months mm -hmm. that's right so actually uh it's a very good way because like for example live staging you can just have your annual live tours and you know you can just buy cheaper you can uh shift them the cost and after you can ask live staging to you know provide you the panoramas or whatever and you can again charge them and I said you for now doesn't really charge for the downloading the panorama. So you can just create some money out of nothing, right? So it's a super good idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, adding on extra services like that, you know, it's, it's such a smart thing to do in your business because it doesn't just give you an opportunity to make more money. It gives your clients an opportunity to have more uh, than they would have had with someone else. So you can make money and you can um, differentiate yourself from your competition even stronger. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, so here we have another question that mm -hmm. they're asking, are you co uh, your cost is based on the square feet of the house or are you priced mm -hmm. on Tools are we call it price like the same price for uh, yeah so so we have a couple different packages um you know i have some flat rate services and then we have uh some packages that are based on the square footage of the house um <laughs> the the when i charge based on the square footage it's because something about the size of the house uh, directly influences how much time is going to be spent there. So there's some things like a quick drone photo shoot outside that, that and that's, that's not really going to take long, no matter how big the house is. So those are a flat rate. Um, the, you know, doing a photo shoot inside of a 2000 square foot house versus a 6,000 square foot house, 6,000 square foot house is going to be much more time, much more work. So, um, that's when we bill based off of 
square footage. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so if you guys, you don't have any other questions, I see Lev is typing now. Uh, we can go ahead and wrap up this webinar today. So um, what I will say is like a little bit what Thomas have already mentioned has already mentioned. So if you want to start your real estate photography business, what you can do first is provide some free tours go ahead and call uh, local real estate photograph photographers to figure out the pricing what's in the market um figure out you know what is your real cost per time then you can charge that as well and actually be more flexible with your real estate agents those people will be your clients your loyal clients in the future so keep do account management call them to see how they're doing and stuff in your off seasons and you know don't invest big invest you know a uh, very low in your first year maybe you know you can try ice aging subscriptions or you can try maybe i don't know the smartphone capturing solution so try out first if this business works for you before you will start investing more into it so um what i will say is like i really thank you thomas that you join us for today um if you you guys you want to hear more about thomas and how he's pricing his business how he's doing other things what you need to do is go and follow him on his podcast he's uploaded uh, roughly once per month and he has super super informative content there uh actually you can just type on google full-time real estate photographer and you can find him right thomas Yes, uh, I think I'm one of only two real estate photography podcasts on earth, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. We syndicate out to all the major podcasting apps, so just search full-time real estate photographer um, mm -hmm. and should pop right up. It's got a picture of my face right on the cover, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't be too hard to find. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So thank you very much, guys uh for joining us today thank you thomas again uh was really really helpful the content uh stay safe everybody stay safe and we'll catch up soon thank you very much everybody bye bye